this week it's a vlog about how to do a vlog. So not really content and what you put in a vlog but I was sort of sat there last night thinking what do I meant to do I'm all out of ideas I can't think of anything and then I thought but how do I actually think about doing something and then all of a sudden I got this sort of idea together of biologically how do I make a vlog so first of all the actual idea of making a vlog um, I'm sitting there and in my brain I have impulses firing um, back and forward and extra potentials and things between my frontal lobe which is the part of the brain to do with personality and original thought and all the rest of it and my occipital lobe at the back which is to do with um, analysis like data analysis so now between my frontal lobe and my occipital lobe we have a plan and the plan is we're making a video so next thing is uh, go and pick up my video camera this requires my frontal lobe to initiate the idea of movement um, and then after I've got this initial idea there's sort of like an impulse sent to the back and to the bottom to something called the cerebellum and the cerebellum is responsible for um, coordinated movement and skilled movement and things like that first of all I have to find my video camera and to find it I obviously have to use my eyes so light is reflected off the video camera and um, it's focused through the lens, the cornea, the front bit of the eye onto the fovea which is like a tiny little part of the retina at the back of the eye uh, that contains things called cone cells. Cone cells are responsible for letting us see in colour. Uh, light hits these and um, it bleaches them and the action of them being bleached makes a chemical I think called um, either retinal or opsin or well it makes both I think it's the opsin that is responsible for sending an action potential or well a nervous impulse or action potential um, from the cone cell through a bipolar neuron to a sensory neuron uh, back up to uh, my occipital lobe, my occipital lobe, not only does data analysis, it's also responsible for um, processing and interpreting what I see. So I now know where my video camera is because light has reflected and gone through all these processes just for me to know where it is. Which is odd because it feels almost instantaneous to just see and know where it is, but this is what's actually going on. So now I know where it is, uh, I have to go and pick it up and this is going to require muscles. So. Uh, the frontal lobe says I have to go pick it up, that's the initiation, it sends messages to the cerebellum that triggers uh, action potentials and nerve impulses down things called motor neurons which are responsible for muscle um, movement um, and that lets me sort of stand up and go over. So how do muscles work? First of all a message has to get from the cerebellum to the nerves to the muscle. Nerves are cells with um, an internal negative charge which means there are generally more negative things on the inside of them than the outside and the way they send a message is um, little sodium channels, Na plus channels, sodium ion channels open up and sodium can flood into the nerve and this depolarizes it and makes it the same um, polarity as what is outside of the nerve um, and then once you've done that to one bit of the nerve it then moves to the next bit and hops and hops and hops sort of like that um, between different parts of the nerve that it can get to until it finally reaches the muscle um, at the very end, and this is where it gets a bit complicated, a bit biological, at the very end um, there's a space called a synapse between the nerve and the muscle and you can't sort of pass this electrical current across there because there's nothing there but extracellular fluid. So what happens is when um, the final very end little bit of the nerve is depolarized that causes calcium channels to flood open and calcium ions flood in. These calcium ions cause vesicles Vesicles are sort of like little balloons, if you will, little pockets that contain things inside a cell. Uh, it causes these vesicles to migrate or move to sort of this part, this end bit of the nerve. Then these vesicles bind with the presynaptic site and uh, through a process called exocytosis, they basically bond and then open up and force their contents out into the um, synapse. And the contents are neurotransmitters, which are chemicals made by the cells and they basically travel across and meet uh, receptors on the muscle cell. So these things diffuse across, these neurotransmitters are probably something like acetylcholine and it depolarizes the muscle. So now we've gotten as far as um, I can start to contract my muscle. So the receptor is triggered and it depolarizes the muscle cell and in turn this causes depolarization of a special organelle, sort of like an organ within a cell, 
um, to be triggered and open up called a sarcoplasmic reticulum and this contains something called calcium ions. Now hold that thought that calcium ions are now being released into my muscle cells um, because they're going to be responsible for the next bit because first you have to know how a muscle cell contracts. Right, muscles have two kinds of fibres. One, used by this piece of paper, is actin. The other, this piece of paper, is myosin. Uh, the idea is that they sort of bond together and then they sort of start to overlap bit by bit and they bond and then they move a bit and then they break and then they bond again and they move a bit more and then they break and so on hundreds of millions of times until you finally contract your muscle and this happens in a split second. Um, unfortunately actin myosin can't bind straight away because if they could bind straight away you would forever be locked up and contracted there has to be a trigger and that trigger is the calcium ions so the little spaces where actin and myosin uh, can bond are covered by different proteins um, troponin and tropomyosin so the idea is the calcium ions flood out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum that's just been opened and once they've flooded out they trigger well they bond to troponin which is um, one protein and they change the shape and by changing the shape it moves the other protein tropomyosin off of um, the binding sites for actin and myosin this way actin and myosin cross bridges can form and the muscle cell can contract. Dorf, I've only got as far as thinking up the idea, finding my camera and picking it up and I've not even talked about the mechanism for contraction. So biological process is very very quick, explaining them just oh, so much. So yeah, I'll see you next week.